Hi, in this session I'm going to show you how to create a RACI chart or it's also known as a responsibility assignment matrix is a tool used in project management to track the rows and responsibilities. Now the RACI is an acronym and each one of them, each one of the words uh, stand for something. The R in RACI stands for responsible. Who is responsible for the work or the task? The A is accountable. Basically, who is the where, where does the buck stop? Who is the one person that is held accountable if this task is done or not done? Uh, the C is consulted. So who basically that usually means who is the subject matter expert? Who should be consulted for this task? And the I is informed uh, when this task is completed or if there's questions on this task, who is informed about it? So basically the informed is someone that is given a FYI or for your information um, for the particular task. Now a RACI basically is a matrix here. So this is an example here. We have our, in this example here, I've indicated a column for steps and a task. Now the steps may occur in a numerical order. And if you change the task around, at least with this, you can change and um, make the task numbers in ascending or descending order. On the top here for the columns, we have our rows or names. Usually it's rows, but you can identify names also like the name of the person that is performing that task and within the matrix here that's where you would fill out who is part of that RACI assignment who's responsible accountable consulted or informed now in this particular RACI we have the capability of just doing the drop down so you can say I and you can notice that once the letter is selected there is a color code that indicates so it's more visually easier to identify which person or which row uh, is what part of the RACI. So also there is a kind of validation here. If I just type the letter O, it won't let, if I press enter, it won't let me. An error would basically occur. So this enables you to, it makes it so that you would type in the RACI and nothing else. Also with this particular chart, uh, we have frozen the, the top row. So if there are a bunch of tasks at the bottom, and if we scroll, we, we notice that the top row stays consistent and that's basically just freezing that row. Um, I'll go ahead and start to show you how to create this and uh, at the end actually if you notice at the top we have the orientation of the words here in a um, it's not a horizontal or orientation it's a vertical orientation some people like a vertical some people like a diagonal uh, near the end of the video I'll show you how to do both so you can set that up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this first row up from A to I Control C to copy, go into the second sheet, and I'm just going to go ahead and just paste the values. I don't want to copy that formatting that I had earlier so I can show the example of how we did the orientation of the text. So I'm just going to go ahead and click paste and just paste values. So it's just going to paste the text without any formatting. I'm also going to copy some of the step numbers here in the task. So I'm just going to go ahead and select down here. How, how, much, how far am I down here? Let me see. Down to number 25. Okay, I just do a Control C to copy go back here and control V to paste. Now I've, I've mentioned earlier we had frozen this row and so you can make it easier when you hover when you scroll I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now I'm also going to copy this. I'm going to take this as is and copy the formatting the colors too so at least I can see that there. I'm going to put it over here in, in cell in this cell and oh it let me go ahead and just double click that. Let me bring it up here and double click this to auto fit so it makes it look, look a little bit better and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna freeze this row so you can go under view and go ahead and click freeze pane and you're gonna we're gonna freeze the first top row so if, as I scroll you can see that it stays there so how do we do this part how do we do it where we have it only select a in the drop a R A C I R A C I for the drop down and also do the color coding. Well, there's two things going on. First is data validation, and then second is conditional formatting. So I'm going to select this area from C to I and go all the way down to, I guess, step 25. Let me see. All right. And I'm going to do the data validation first. So we'll go under the data tab and go under where it says, and the data tools group, go to data validation and select data validation here. So what I want to do is have a list. And here in this list, I'm going to type R, I mean capital R, 
comma a comma c comma and then i and so there's an input message here so it's selected where if the cell is selected it's going to input a message there's no message here but what when we earlier saw when i inputted anything other than RACI, I got an error. So this check mark is automatically by default. So when I enter anything other than RACI, I'm going to get an error. So that's fine. I'm just going to leave that. You can you can input a kind of error here where you can say only only type only input RAC or I, and so that will show up. Click OK. And you'll notice that when I click in here now, I've got this drop down, and I can type select a C, or if I try to type U here and press enter, you'll see that that message shows up now. All right, so that's that. Let me go ahead and uh, maybe put, select some other cells, and you see you have an R here. Let me put in uh, A here and put in a I here. And so the other thing we can do here to visually identify the RACI is to do conditional formatting. So I'm going to select this area again and go under the home ribbon and go into conditional formatting and then I'm going to highlight the cells when the cell text contains something so I'm going to go ahead and actually I can probably go the, here to more rules this will let me insert one rule uh, but here it will bring up the window where I can insert probably multiple rules or I can I don't have to close the window again and again so I want to only want to format only cells that contain this text value. So the specific text, I'm going to start off with the R, and if the R is orange, so if it contains an R, I'm going to select the formatting and do the fill uh, for orange color. All right. So I'm going to click OK, and that has selected it. Oh, okay, the window closed. Let me go ahead and go under. Uh, Conditional formatting, manage rules, and a window will show up where I can add additional uh, rules. So I'm going to add a new rule. That was for the or that was for the R. For the A, let me go ahead and add a new rule, and go into format only cells that contain text, specific text. And if it contains the letter A, let me make that red. Click red here, and then and do another one for C. Add a new rule if Format only cells that contain and with the specific text with the letter C, make that one blue. So I'm gonna make that one blue. All right, and then the last one, click OK here. And then for the last one, new rule for I. And then if the text contains an I, then that's gonna be gray. So let me go ahead and select gray here. Click OK, click OK. All right, and click OK. And so you notice if I go back up here, you'll see that the colors have been filled out. R is, first, R is orange, A is red, C is blue, and I is gray. So if I selected any other letters here, you'll notice that now the colors have changed accordingly. Now, as I mentioned before, what if we wanted to have this a little bit more nicer? See, we notice that with the letters, depending on how many letters, excuse me, you know, if you notice with the words, depending on how many letters are in the words, the column auto fits, and they vary by the amount of letters in the words. Now, to make it a little bit more easier to read, we can select this and change the orientation. So I can select that and just press Control 1. It's going to bring up the format cells, and I want to change the alignment. And the alignment I can change here with the orientation part here. So I can change it to 90 degrees and click OK and you'll notice that now it is oriented vertically. And all I need to do now is just kind of uh, select the columns. I'm just going to go ahead and select all the cells and double click that and now you can see that it's kind of nice and even. Let me go ahead and also uh, do some formatting here and make the uh, borders a little bit more pronounced. I click that and then I'll go ahead and under the font group I'll just click all borders. Now how do we, I had mentioned before, uh, we some people may like this more at an angle, so basically you go back into uh, selecting that cell, pressing control 1, and change the orientation here, and maybe make it about uh, 40, maybe make it 45 degrees. So if we click OK, now you notice that we have that kind of 
angled orientation. Some people like it like this, some people like it vertical. But uh, this is your basic uh, RACI chart. What I forgot to mention earlier, we have this drop down here. So basically what happens is if we select these two columns and then press Control shift l it's going to uh, create a little filter here. And let's say that, for example, uh, this task became not the 11th task, but it became the 30th, 30th task. Maybe we've added some more. We, we arranged things around. And what you can do here is you can just sort it now. That's right. So let's let's just pretend that you know there's 26, 27, 20, 29. So you can sort it if you've ever had the need to like rearrange tasks and numbers. That's why this number here it makes it a little bit easier to sort things. Let me go ahead and uh, double click, select it all, and double click it to auto fit everything else here. But um, there you have it. We have our basic uh, racy chart. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.